In this lesson, we'll use what we've learned about point of view as we listen to two different stories about Cinderella. After each of the stories, we'll stop and use the clues from the story to decide who is talking in each of the stories. We'll also stop and talk about how the person who's telling the story feels about Cinderella. Let's start with the first story. Cinderella based on the story by Charles Peralt, retold by Sarah L. Thompson, illustrated by Nicoletta Sassoli. Once upon a time, a rich merchant lived with his daughter. He loved the girl for her beautiful face and her sweet heart. But after his wife died, he decided to marry a second time, and his new wife was selfish and cruel. She had two daughters of her own who were just like her. The stepmother forced her stepdaughter to wash the pots and pans, scrub the floors, and tend the fire. The poor girl did not even have a bed of her own, but lay by the hearth every night and rose in the morning covered with cinders, and so her stepsisters called her Cinderella. One day the king sent word that he would hold a grand ball. There the prince would choose a wife. I shall wear my red velvet with the lace, declared the older stepsister. I'll wear my satin with the golden flowers, said the younger one. Cinderella gathered up her courage to ask a question. Can't I, she said. Hand me my stocking, said the older stepsister. May I, said Cinderella. Tie this ribbon in my hair, said the younger stepsister. Please, can I go to the ball, asked Cinderella. Certainly not, said her stepmother. And the stepmother and stepsister swept off in their carriage to the castle, leaving Cinderella alone. Cinderella sat by the fire. A gentle voice asked, Why are you crying? Cinderella jumped up. There, in the kitchen, stood a woman with the kindest face she had ever seen. Don't worry, my dear, the woman said. I am your fairy godmother, and I will send you to the ball. But godmother, said Cinderella, I have no carriage or horses, or even a gown to wear. Never fear, said her godmother, and bring me a pumpkin from the garden. Bewildered, Cinderella picked a plump orange pumpkin. The godmother touched the pumpkin with the magic of her wand. And it turned into an elegant coach. The magic turned six mice into six prancing horses, two lizards into two proud footmen, and a rat into a plump coachman. When the wand brushed Cinderella's rags, she was dressed in pale blue velvet and silver satin. On her feet were a pair of glass slippers, delicate as icicles. You are dressed like a queen, said her godmother. Behave like one as well. Be kind and courteous to all you meet, and leave the ball before midnight, or everything that my spells have created will vanish. Cinderella promised to come home by midnight and rode off to the ball. When Cinderella walked into the ballroom, the fiddlers paused on their strings. The dancers craned their necks to see her. The prince bowed low and asked her to dance. Whispers raced through the crowd. She must be a princess from some foreign land. How gracefully she dances. What a sweet smile. Why, the prince can't keep his eyes off her. But Cinderella remembered her godmother's words. Before midnight, she curtsied to the prince and hurried out the door. Just as Cinderella's coach rolled up in front of her house, the church clock struck twelve times. Cinderella found herself in rags once more, sitting on a pumpkin with mice and lizards and a big fat rat at her feet. The next night, the king held another ball. Cinderella's godmother sent her in a gown of white silk sparkling with diamonds and the same glass slippers. The prince danced with no one else. But please, he begged, won't you tell me your name? Cinderella hesitated, and the clock struck the first stroke of midnight. Cinderella slipped from the prince's arms and ran toward the door. Wait, he cried, running after her. 
but when he looked outside, the beautiful princess was nowhere to be found. He could see nothing but a shabby little servant girl with a pumpkin in her arms. On the steps was one of the glass slippers. When Cinderella's stepsisters arrived home, they were full of stories about the mysterious princess. The prince swears he'll bring the slipper to every home in the kingdom, exclaimed the younger stepsister, and he'll marry the woman whose foot fits into it. Well, said the elder one, that woman will be me. No, said the younger, me. The next day the prince arrived. A servant followed him, carrying the glass slipper. The elder stepsister sat on a stool. She shoved and pushed until she cried, but she could not get her foot into the shoe. The younger stepsister tried next. She wiggled and twisted until she sobbed, but her foot would not fit either. Then the prince heard a quiet voice asking, May I try too? Get back to your kitchen, cried the stepmother. But the prince remembered Cinderella's voice and her gentle eyes and her sweet smile. He knelt and slipped the shoe on Cinderella's foot. He was not surprised when she drew the matching slipper from her pocket and placed it on her other foot. You are the princess I danced with, he said. I knew it the minute I saw you. Cinderella and the prince were married as soon as the wedding feast could be prepared, and Cinderella, who was as good as she was beautiful, invited her stepsisters and her stepmother to the wedding. Her stepmother was too out of sorts to dance, and as for the stepsisters, their feet were too sore from trying on the slipper. It was weeks before they had recovered enough to dance even a jig. But Cinderella and her prince lived happily ever after. All right, let's stop and talk about the story. In Cinderella, who is talking in this traditional version of the story? Pause the video and think about your answer. In the traditional version of this Cinderella story, the narrator is telling the story. This is being told by a third person point of view. Somebody outside the story is narrating, watching what's happening, and telling what's happening in the story. Question number two, how do they feel about Cinderella? From the way the story is told, it seems that the narrator feels that Cinderella is a good person, that she deserves to be happy, and she deserves to be with the prince. Now let's listen to another Cinderella story, and we'll do the same thing. We'll talk about who's telling the story and how they feel about Cinderella. Hey friends, Miss Kay here with a super fun book. This one is called, Seriously, Cinderella is So Annoying. The story of Cinderella as told by the wicked stepmother. It was written by Trisha Speed Shashen and illustrated by Gerald Gorley. You must have heard of me, the wicked stepmother. Not true. It's just another one of Cinderella's wild stories. Not as wild as the one about the pumpkin. And the fairy godmother. The real story, the true story, began with some chatter and some dust. All I ever wanted was a husband and a mansion. Before I married Cindy's father, my two darlings and I had met Cindy only a few times. The girl had seemed normal then. After I married Cindy's father, my darlings and I moved in. When I had just one foot on the front step, my dear husband kissed me goodbye and said, I'm off on business. He leaves Austin, Cindy said. But the animals stay put. They talk, they joke, they sing, they even help out, especially the bluebirds. Now, I don't mind a story, but I like facts not fiction. Soon, the girl was talking all kinds of hokey pokey. Once upon a time, Cindy said, one of the bluebirds became blue. Not the color, the feeling. His friend had flown south. My darlings and I were stuck near the front door. I just wanted to put away my bags, and that's when I saw it. Dust. 
Dear, is the whole house this dusty? I asked. I don't know, Cindy said. I'll give you a tour. In the dining room, Cindy told stories. In the study, Cindy told stories. Non stop. Girls, I said, time to get to work. This place needs a good cleaning. Once upon a time, when I was cleaning, Cindy started. Oh boy. Cindy mopped the floor, but she finished so fast, my darlings had barely started. Did you know robins and sparrows are my friends? She said. But the sparrows don't like the robins. Silly creatures. Once upon a time, one of the robins... Cindy, dear, I said. Why don't you go and wash the clothes now, hmm? But Cindy washed them so fast. How on earth did she do it? I had to find another chore for her just to keep her busy. If there's one thing squirrels love, it's washing clothes, Cindy said. The rats, though, would rather iron. You know, one day I... Squirrels and rats doing laundry. Quit telling such foolish stories, I said. Time passed, but nothing changed. In the garden, Cindy told stories. In the kitchen, Cindy told stories. At dinner, I couldn't hear myself think. Dear, please, I said, stop talking. But Cindy didn't stop. One day, a letter arrived. It was an invitation to the king's ball. The prince would surely fall in love with one of my darlings. Then they would marry, live in a beautiful castle, and one day be king and queen of all the land. Oh, stepmother, I have to go too, said Cindy. Once upon a time, a girl and a prince. And then, just like that, Cindy lost her voice. Imagine. It had to be from all that storytelling. Well, what could I do? I told Cindy she had to stay home for her health. She cried, of course, but a ball was no place for a sick girl. She needed rest. Sometimes it's so hard being a stepmother. At the ball, my darlings twirled. They whirled, but then some strange girl waltzed in. Her gown was magnificent. I couldn't take my eyes off it. I wondered how much it cost and if my seamstress could copy it for me. The prince and the girl danced and pranced. My poor darlings were left princeless. A few days later, the prince made an announcement. A glass slipper had been left at the castle. The prince would marry the girl whose foot it fit. Our big chance. After visiting every other mansion in the neighborhood, the prince's valet arrived at our door. Me, me, said one of my darlings. No, me, said the other. One at a time, said the valet. Each girl tried, but the shoe didn't fit. Then Cindy pushed out a whisper. Please, let me try. The shoe fit. Cindy pulled the match out of her pocket. What? My darlings cried. Cindy pushed out another whisper. She said something about a pumpkin coach and mice that turned into horses. She even added a fairy godmother. Please, there's no such thing. But I still don't know where she got those shoes. A few days later, the prince married Cindy. Poor man. He had no idea what he was getting himself into. But we lived happily ever after. Hey friends, the author left us something to think about. She writes, think about it. Read a classic version of Cinderella. No All right, let's reflect on the story. Who is talking? And seriously, Cinderella is so annoying.
Who is the person telling the story? Pause the video and think about it. This Cinderella story starts with the stepmother saying that she's the one telling the story. How do they, the stepmother, feel about Cinderella? Again, pause the video and think about it. The stepmother in the story makes it very clear that she does not like Cinderella. She thinks that Cinderella talks too much and she just thinks Cinderella is annoying. Great job.